Let me ask you guys this. When was the last time that you personally saw an MMO so well done that it absolutely shattered records made all throughout the year? Because, well, in this instance in specific, records were definitely made by an MMO that a lot of us had actually written off. Now, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe for new MMO news like this every day. And if you feel like I deserve it, drop a like and a comment on the video. It is a huge help for the YouTube algorithm. So on June 29th, Kakao released their latest open world MMORPG, Odin and Valhalla Rising. Through the trailers that they had released up until that point, I'm not gonna lie here, the game looked pretty damn good. Very similar to Black Desert Online, and I would went on to cover this game on multiple different occasions up until this point, as I do with all upcoming MMOs. But what really caught my attention was that at the time, just prior to the game launching, more than 4 million players were already pre-registered for the game. 4 million. That is an enormous number of interested players, given that the game was launching, at least at the time, within the South Korean region exclusively. Now, don't get me wrong, it was definitely possible to get around the pre-registration restrictions, and it is even easier to get into the game now that some of those limitations are no longer in place, but the vast majority of those players were predominantly Korean. Shortly after launching to millions of players, Lionheart Studio, the developer of the game, announced that they were in the process of rolling out additional servers in an effort to lower the large clusters of players all trying to connect and play concurrently. A month after launching, Odin Valhalla Rising was the highest grossing MMORPG in the world. And I am not kidding, I'm not even over exaggerating here. This game launched on June 29th, 2021. By July 2nd, 2021, a mere three days later, the game had accumulated more in sales than any other MMO at the time, and interestingly enough, any game released on either PC or mobile. After a further two weeks had passed, Kakao went on to confirm that the game had made over 100 billion won, which equates to roughly 85 million US dollars in just 19 days. Yeah, in less than three weeks, Odin Valhalla Rising had made almost $100 million in total revenue. And this is something that caught a lot of people off guard, something that absolutely nobody had expected. Kakao, while they were the publisher for Black Desert over in the West for a while, have had no real success with any other MMOs up until this point and players never anticipated they would with this game either. But this was a cross-platform MMO between both PC and mobile devices, employing and utilizing traditional mobile systems like auto-pathing and auto-combat. Now, just because it has auto features does not automatically make it inherently bad, nor does that mean that the game would make use of those mechanics at endgame. So don't take this as me claiming that the entire game is completely auto-themed. Now, it is just, to me, so surreal that an MMO that is like Odin Valhalla ended up becoming as popular, as widely accepted and played as it has. Now, granted, this isn't widely played over in the West and Western players are very different players to Eastern players over in Japan, over in South Korea and over in China. But Genshin Impact, at least to me, made sense. It looked gorgeous. It had some quality combat, a lot of very attractive husbandos and waifus to collect. It preyed on players with addictive personalities and it drained them of pretty much every single cent that they had. But Odin provides none of that. Sure, the game is a large open world MMO, but so is almost every other mobile MMO, or at the very least they claim they are. I guess it's partly due to the attention span that mobile gamers have. There is a reason auto mechanics are so prevalent in mobile titles after all. Nevertheless, Odin Valhalla Rising has absolutely shattered records for a mobile MMORPG, and even more impressively, for a PC MMORPG. This game, since launching three months ago, has made hundreds of millions of dollars, has had tens of millions of active players across both platforms, and has went on to absolutely dominate the Korean MMO market. Sure, it may be a ways off of competing with the other titans of the genre within Korea like Lineage 2 Revolution, but rivaling Genshin Impact, which also went on to garner roughly $100 million within its first month as well, that is impressive. Honestly, I'm surprised that months later, we haven't had any confirmation of a Western release. 
You'd think given the success that Odin has had, Kakao would want to get this MMO out for the whole world to play. I mean, outside of its release within Korea, do we even have a confirmed release anywhere else in the world? Typically China, Japan, and other Asian regions would follow a release within Korea, with Europe and North America typically getting games a year or two later, but we haven't heard anything at present. Now, whether you're excited to try this game out or not, you cannot deny its overwhelming success. This game has taken the cross-platform MMO market in South Korea by storm, and there has to be a reason for that. I'm not typically a fan of autoplay MMOs, I'm not. I find them lacking in purpose, as I play MMOs to experience a world with thousands of other players, not with thousands of other AI-controlled players. Yet even so, I am intrigued by the game enough where I would definitely spend some time in it. I've spent plenty of time in V4, I've spent weeks in Punishing Grey Raven, State of Survival, and yeah, I may have spent money in each and every one of them, but that's not something that you can hold against me. I feel like when you play a mobile game, you are absolutely required to spend something on it, be it for an outfit, for a VIP membership, or simple quality of life improvement. While Odin Valhalla Rising might not be the success over here in the West that it necessarily is within Korea, I am genuinely curious to see how players receive the title, partly because this will be the first true cross-platform MMORPG that we will get, as Tower of Fantasy will likely release over in the West after Odin does, and partly because this could ultimately shape the future of the MMORPG genre. In a good or a bad way, who knows? Some 